Welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. Today, we're going to go over the Inkbird IBS-M1 and the Inkbird IBS-TH2 sensor. Don't forget, like, subscribe, keep sharing, definitely appreciate it. First of all, why did I buy these? Why did I buy, I got four sensors and a gateway. <sighs> yeah. Yes, it's a book giveaway, yes. United States of Beer, it's more of a story, basically the true tale of how beer conquered America from BC to Budweiser and beyond. Remember, look for the key words towards the end of the video. I've been busy, 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 working a lot, and each day I started noticing that my beer fridge, the beer seemed like it was a little warmer, but you know, I'm getting old, maybe it was me, I don't know. I'm thinking, ah, it's playing tricks on me. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I bought the beer fridge over four years ago for about 200 bucks used, and it was freezing up. I had to replace the thermostat, I had to replace the little heater, and it was all great. Well, it started freezing up again. It hasn't done it yet since I fixed it recently, but as soon as I fixed it, I went on to Amazon and I'm starting to look and I'm like, I've got to fix this problem and I want to know next time it happens before it's a little too late. Yeah, I say a little too late. I have probably around 60 plus yeast in my little yeast bank. And as they get warmer, some of them start fermenting at lower temperatures than others. And it can cause some problems. Now, there are some that just over time just aren't viable. But I lost at least five or six that I am definitely aware of. And I've probably lost more I'm not aware of. I've been doing a lot of yeast starters and I gotta go through them and see what's viable, what's not. You can tell, it, they either kick like they used to or they don't kick at all and they have no odor or the odor's a little off. So what did I order and why? This video is about basically a low cost solution that works, at least for me, your mileage may vary, for monitoring my keyser's temperature, my fermenters, ambient temperature, same thing with the keyser, I'm just trying to get ambient temperature, and then my beer fridge and my beer freezer, because my beer freezer is full of hops, and I don't want to lose that either. So on the good side, I live in Florida, we have hurricanes, so about every other shelf has a big giant ice pack in it, just in case we have massive power outage. The fridge slash freezer can go for a few days. So I was a little lucky there. This video, I'm gonna cover what this is, what's compatible, how to set it up, how to monitor it, how to get your graphs, and then at the end, for people who really need to know because they're looking to buy these, how to set it up without a problem and how to troubleshoot it if you do have a problem because I had almost a two hour nightmare and was getting ready to return everything. I am returning two additional sensors and I will explain so that you buy the right products. Of course, there will be links down below. All of this was purchased on Amazon, but let's jump right into this. First of all, we're covering the Inkbird IBS M1 Wi-Fi Gateway. It supports up to four Inkbird sensors for remote monitoring of temperature and humidity via the internet using Inkbird Pro app on iOS or Android device. Inkbird Pro app is important. There's a lot of Inkbird apps out there, even one spelled E-N-G, but you need the Inkbird Pro app. That's what is designed for this. I know this has, and I don't know how the lights are gonna look on camera, but. I know it has eight little marks. It only supports four. I don't know why they have eight and it only does four, but it is what it is. Maybe they're coming out with a pro or they were gonna come out with a pro. As I can't even find this on Inkbird's website, it's very hard to find information on this device. But luckily, I'm a network engineer and I figured out quite a bit about this thing that is not documented. The documentation is sadly poor for troubleshooting. For setting it up, it's pretty straightforward, but even that can be problematic. I purchased, like I said, four sensors from Amazon with the gateway for less than $110. Batteries not included. I know I had them around here somewhere, but you need two AA batteries for each sensor. The older sensors used to use one lithium ion and people complained that it wasn't holding charge and there was some problems with distance. So the two AAA batteries seemed to do a great job. This device here is powered from a little USB plug. So, no battery required. The gateway uses 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, which is incredibly important to know later on. The sensors are connected to the gateway either through Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Bluetooth maximum distance is 98 feet. I usually will cut that in half and you'll be safe. 
Some sites say 164 feet. I seriously doubt that's even possible. Wireless devices, it says up to 300 feet, assuming it doesn't have to go through objects or have interference from other devices. So if you assume about 100 feet, you should be good. So take that into consideration. According to everything out there on this, the only things supported are the IBS TH1, TH1 Mini, TH1 Plus, IBS P01B, ITH20R-0, IBS P01R-0. The IBS TH2 is not supported, or at least is not listed. It is supported, it does work. I promise you, it works. When you go to buy an IBS-TH2, make sure you get the one that says temperature and humidity. It's a few dollars more. They run around 20 bucks. I'll tell you a way to get a better deal. Do not get the one that says temperature only. Trust me on that. I'm sorry, Inkbird, but I can't get this to connect to this if it goes inside of a fridge and I'm eight inches away. If I'm 10 feet away and there's no fridge, it works just fine. I'm currently about 35 feet away and I have the temperature and humidity version of the IBS-TH2 and it works just fine. So I don't know the difference between the temperature and the temperature and humidity one, but it's massive. A few dollars more, much, much, much better product. I'm returning these. I already have my Amazon return label. What do you get in the box when you order one of these? You will get a sensor. You will need two AAA batteries. You will get a little tiny instruction sheet that you should not need because you got one with your gateway. And you will get a tiny little screwdriver so that you can open the back and put the batteries in. This just happens to be one I'm returning. So I'm going to put it all back in here and set it over there. Let's get into the app. First, how to add sensors. This is extremely important, but it is super easy if you do it properly. You will turn this on. This is the gateway. This will either be flashing very fast, very slow, not flashing at all, or not lit up. You wanna install the Inkbird Pro app on your phone or whatever iOS or Android device you have, you can hold this button down for approximately five seconds and it will change from fast to slow, sometimes off. You want it fast, leave it fast. Don't let it do anything else. Get your phone. When you go into the phone, you're going to basically give it your Wi-Fi information. You're going to pick the IBS device, MS1, and you're going to say connect. It will connect if you only have a 2.4 gigahertz network. If you have a five gigahertz network, there is a chance it will never connect. You need to turn off your five gigahertz network broadcasting temporarily, get this connected. Once it's connected, you can turn off the, or you can turn the five gigahertz back on and you'll be fine. I spent two hours trying to figure that out and was getting frustrated. Finally, I turned it off just because I had heard of something like that many years ago. And guess what? it instantly connected, so it was all good. If for some reason you feel like you've jacked it up, it's got a reset button, you can hold it for five seconds while it's plugged in and it will go back to defaults. Again, five seconds changes the modes, not a big deal. Once you have the gateway set up, then you're ready to add the sensors. Do not just put the batteries in your sensors, leave the batteries out of all of your sensors. So now that you have this added, Add your batteries to one sensor, making sure it's near the gateway that's turned on and plugged in. Snap the batteries in. Give it about a full minute. It will connect. It'll set itself up. You can go into the app then, and you can take a photo, which makes a banner of the location. You can change the name to things like I have, fridge, teaser, freezer, fermenter, or other things. You can see the battery status. You can see the temperature, and you can see the humidity. You can also go into the alerts and make adjustments to where you want it to alert based on if the humidity is too high, too low, if the temperature is too high, too low. You can also do a calibration. So let's say it says it's a few degrees cooler or warmer than you believe it really is. You can put a calibration adjustment in there. And of course, you can also change it from Fahrenheit to Celsius. So it works for pretty much everyone. The log only, now, you go in and check your logs after you've been monitoring for a while. The logs only show days, weeks, or months, but 
you can go into every individual sensor and you can export those logs. And those logs will come out in a CSV file. And that CSV file will have a log based on how you set up how frequently you want updates from the sensor. And you can set it to one minute, two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, or even 30 minutes. So when you pull that log, you're going to have a huge log if you're doing minutes. If you're doing 30 minutes, it's not gonna be quite as large based on how long of a log you have. You can take those logs and then of course put them on your computer and you can do all kinds of crazy and fun graphs if you're into that. Keeping it simple today. Keyword, Inkbird. Just put the word Inkbird anywhere in your comments a week from today. We'll pull a winner. Thank you again. And the last thing, and this is why I was saying this, for troubleshooting. If you already have one of these and you've already tried to set it up and you've jacked it up and it isn't working, let's start from there. First, hold the reset for five seconds. Make sure your batteries are removed from all sensors, all sensors. Once it's done, make sure this is flashing quickly. Go into your home Wi-Fi. Make sure all five gigahertz radios are turned off. Now, go into your device that you're using to set it up. It's going to prompt you once you pick that device what your Wi-Fi name and password is. You'll notice it likes to put a space in front of them. Back it up, make sure there's no spaces, just the name and the password. Hit boom. It should connect right away. If it doesn't, you may have to try a couple times, but it should do it on the first try if you've reset everything correctly. Once it is reset, if you had the app already on your device and you name things, those names won't go away because you didn't reset the app on your device. You just reset this. Take one sensor at a time, set it down next to it, put the batteries in it, give it a good minute, maybe two, but a good minute to come up and it should start blinking with a blue light. You are good. Move on to your next one and keep going until you have all four of them done. Don't do anything over four. It won't see it. It won't read it. It just won't. Make sure when you buy them, you buy the temperature and humidity versions, unless you're doing something for pool temperature or some other type of probe or monitor, which Inkbird sells that's compatible with the IBS device, the gateway. So keep that in mind and you want the fast blinking. I can't think of much else to it. I will tell you my range is really good with these and I'm saying really good as in I can read my keyser when I'm in the garage with this device, which is probably about 25 feet away. Um, beer fridge and everything in here through a wall, through a fridge door and a freezer door that's well insulated. I'm still seeing it and I'm 25, 30 feet, maybe 35 feet even away. It just, it works. It's cheap and it works. Little trick since you've been watching this long, I'm gonna help save you some money. When you go to Amazon and you buy these devices and they offer coupons on them, only buy one of each device. Apply your coupon, check out. Give it a few minutes, go back into Amazon, buy additional devices one at a time. You can now apply that coupon to each device. If you tried to stack them all, you're only gonna get a coupon for one device. You can apply it to each device. If you do it too quickly on the purchase, it will ask you if you have Alzheimer's. Yeah, what it says is, hey, are you sure you just didn't do a duplicate purchase? You just bought this. And you have to say, yes, I know I'm buying another one. And each device you're buying like that on Amazon with those coupons, and I know Amazon's probably going, why are you telling people this? You can keep applying that same coupon as long as it's viable if you're only buying one at a time. Just a little trick to save you some money. Don't forget, like, subscribe, keep sharing. If you do buy one of these and you have a problem, I'm leaving links down below. Let me know, I'll try to help you out and see what we can do to get it working. Because like I said, this thing drove me nuts, but once I figured it out and got it working, I'm very happy, it's very inexpensive, and it will let me know when I have a problem. Thank you again, don't forget, like, subscribe, keep sharing, appreciate it.